next witness. I'm your friendly neighborhood baker. Stephen. Stephen is my name.
I better start baking anyway. However, however. Hamlin Towns in Brunswick, my famous hat of the city. The river western, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied. But when begins my ditty, almost 500 years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats, bit babies in the cradles, and ate the cheeses from the vats, and licked the soup from the cooks on ladles, spit open the kegs of salted sprats, they nest in men's Sunday hats, and even spoil the women's chats by drowning out their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharks and flats. At last, the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, cried they, our mayor is a naughty, and as for our corporation, shocking, I think we buy gowns lined with turban, for dolts to canter when we determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese to find the furry civic robes. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking. Find remedy we are lacking, for sure as fate will send you packing. At this, the mayor and corporation quaked with a mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council, at length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder, I'd my room and gown sell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just he said the switch should have at the chamber door, but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little to wonder his fat. Nor brighter were his eyes, nor moister, than a too long open oyster. Save when it knew his paunch for muteness, for a plate of turtle green and glutinous. Only a scraping of shoes on a mat, anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart get a pat. Come in, cried the mayor, looking bigger, and in did come the strangest figure. His long queer coat from heel to head was half yellow and half red, and he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes, each like kin, and light loose hair and swarthy skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek nor beard on chin. But lips a smile went out and in, there was no guessing his kip or kin, and nobody could enough admire this tall man in his quaint attire. Quoth one, it's as my great grandsire, starting up with the trunk of doom's tone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced towards the council table. Please, your honor, said he, I am feeble. By means of secret charm to draw all the creatures living beneath the sun, the crawl or swim or fly or run, after me, so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, the mole and toad and newt and viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. And here they go to round his neck, a scarf of red and yellow stripe, to match with his coat of self-same check. And at scarf's end on the pipe, and his fingers they notice were never strained, as if envisioned to be playing upon this pipe, as low it dangled over his vesture so fangled. 
Yes, said he, Pied Piper as I am, In Tartary I fred the cam, Last June from his huge swarms of gnats. I eased in Asia the nigh am Of a monstrous brood of vampire bats. And as for what your brain bewilders, If I rid your town of rats, Will you give me one thousand guilders? One, fifty thousand was the exclamation, An astonished merit corporation. Into the street the piper stepped, smiling first a little smile, as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet pipe a while. Like a musical adept to blow his pipe, his lips he wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled. And ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered, he heard as if an army muttered, and a muttering grew to a grumbling, and a grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses came the rats tumbling. Great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, gray rats, tawny rats, Brave old plotters, gay young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and pricking whiskers, families by tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, all the pipe piper for their lives. From street to street, piped advancing, step for step they followed dancing, until they came to the river Wester, where it all plunged and perished. Save one who scouts as Julius Caesar, swam across and lived to carry, as he the manuscript he cherished. Two rat land moments commentary, which was, at first shrill notes of the pipe, I heard a sound as a scraping trite, and putting apples wondrous right into the side press of gray, and moving away a pickle up board, and leaving a jar of constant covered, and then drawing the cork to train oil flask, and breaking loose the butter casks, and it seemed as if a voice, sweeter far than my heart by sultry grief, called out, oh, rats, rejoice, the world has grown to a vast and sultry. So munch on, crunch on, take your nunch on, Breakfast, supper, dinner, lunch on, and just a bulky sugar punch on, already staved like a great sun shone. Gracious, scarce reached before me, just as methought it said, Come for me. I found the west rolling over me. You should have heard the handled people ring the bells so they rock the steeple. Go, cried the mayor, get long poles, poke up the nest, block up the holes, consult with carpenters and builders, leaving our town not even a trace of the rats. When suddenly up the face of the piper perked in the marketplace, the first, if you please, my thousand guilders. A thousand guilders. The mayor looked blue, so did the corporation too. For Count of Innes may wear havoc with Claire A. will sell, bid to grog, hawk, and half the money when you punish, they sell his biggest butt of Rhenish. To pay this sum to a wondering fellow, a gypsy coat of red and yellow. Besides, goes the mayor with annoying wink. Our business is done at the river's brink. We saw with their eyes the vermin sink. And what's dead can't come to life, I think. So, friend, we're not folks to shrink from our duty of giving you something to drink. In a matter of money to put in your coat. But as for the guild, it is what we spoke. Of them, as you well know, was a joke. Besides, the losses have made us thrifty. A thousand guilders come and take fifty. The piper's face fell and he cried. No trifling, I can't wait beside. I promise a visit by dinner time, Baghdad. They accept the crime of the head cook's potage. All he's rich in, for having left in the caliph's kitchen. Of a nest of scorpions, no survivor. With him I prove no bargain driver. With you don't think I'll bait a stiver. And folks who put me in a passion may find me pipe after another fashion. How, cried the mayor, do you think I broke? Being worse treated than a cook, insulted by a rival. Idle pipe and mesh your Bible. Threaten us, fellow. Do your worst. Pull your pipe there till you burst. Once more he stepped into the street, and to his lips again laid his long pipe of sweet straight cane. And there he blew three notes, such sweet, soft notes as if musicians spending every day in the enraptured air. There was a rustling that seemed like a bustling, a merry crowd justling and pitching and hustling. Small feet were pattering, one shoes clattering, little hands clapping, little tongues chattering, like foals in the farmyard of barley and scattering. Out came the children running, all the little boys and girls, with rosy cheeks and flax and curls, and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls, tripping and skipping around merrily after. The wonderful music was shouting in laughter. The mayor was dumb and the council stood, as if they're changed in the blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry to the children merrily skipping by. Could only follow with an eye that joyous crowd at the piper's back, and how the mayor was on the rack, and the wretched council's bosom as the pipe returned from the high street to where the west had rolled its waters right in the way of their sons and daughters. Power returned from south to west and to clop of Archelaus' steps addressed. And after him the children pressed. Great was the joy in every breast. He never crossed the mighty top 
and forth let the piping draw, and we shall see our children stall. Lo, they reach the mountainside, wonders portal open wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed, the piper advanced and the children followed. When all were in to the very last, the door of the mountainside shut fast. Did I say all? No one was lame and could not dance a whole the way. And in after years, if you play the sadness, he used to say, It's dull in our town since my pain made left. I can't forget that I'm a rap of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town in jest at hand, where waters gushed and fruit trees grew, the flowers were forth a fairer hue, and everything was strange and new. The sparrow was buried in peacock deer, and their dogs were rather fellow deer, and honeybees had lost their stings, horses were born with eagles' wings. And just as I became assured, my lame foot was speedily cured. The music stopped, and I stood still, found myself outside the hill, left behind against my will, to go now limping as before, and never hear of that country more. Alas, alas, the Hamelin, there came into many a burger's pate, a text which says that heaven's gate, hopes the rich at as easy rate, as the needle's eye takes the camel in. The mare said east, west, north, and south, to offer the piper by word of mouth, wherever was men's lot to find him, silver and gold to his heart's content, if only he would turn the way he went, and bring the children behind him. But when they saw it was lost endeavor, the piper and Daniel was gone forever. They made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly, if after the day of the month and year, these words do not as well appear. And so long after what happened here, on the 22nd of July, 1376, and the better in memory to fix the place of the children's last retreat, they called it the Pied Piper Street, where anyone playing Piper Tabor, the short for his usual duties of labor, nor suffered they hostile in your tavern to shock and burn the street so solemn and opposite the place of the cavern, they wrote the story on a column, and on great church window painted, the same to make the world acquainted with how their children were stolen away, and there it stands this very day. And I must not admit to say, in Transylvania there is a tribe of alien people who ascribe the way in dress of which their neighbors laid such stress to their fathers and mothers having risen from the subterranean prison into which they were Japan a long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlet towns and Brunswick land, but how why they don't understand. So, Lily, let me and you be wipers, scores out with old men, especially pipers. And if they should pipe us free from rats and from mice, if we promise them on, let us keep our promise.
I'm going to tell you a story about Roland Pied and his oven blade. There once was a young man named Roland Pied who played the recorder when he wasn't baking bagels. One day he was walking through the park and playing his recorder to rest him off from all his baking when suddenly he spied a corpse lying on the ground beneath a swarm of flies. He put down his recorder, walked over to the corpse, shooed the flies away, and covered the dead man with stones. Returning to his oven later that day, he found that his oven blade had gone on by itself and already baked half the bagels he needed. From that day on, Roland Pye was the happiest baker alive. He baked until he was tired, and then he'd pull his recorder out of his pocket while his oven blade went on by itself. But Roland Pye lived in a town and the mayor did not admire his skill and was jealous of his fame. So the mayor devised a plan to rid the town of Roland. In the beginning, he said that Roland was a good worker, but lazy. Next, he said that Roland baked a whole lot, but badly. Then he accused Roland of being a sorcerer. The people turned on him. Therefore, Roland Pied took his recorder and left his home behind. When Roland Pied came to a neighboring town, he went to all the business owners, but none of them would give him any work. Finally, he met an old busker, and asked him for work to keep body and mind together. Come along with me, said the old man, and we will share alms. So Roland Pied, the old man, started going around and singing. Baker, why do you bear those subtle feet? Baker, how did you forget to stand where your feet are? Baker, no woman loves you well, although it is gold and good for her hell. Baker, you are too dirty for a lover to wish to free. Your limbs are the knots and cords of an old-fashioned machine. Make your line the rings and bash the boards. You don't need their applause for a thing that is yours. You are a baker and are what you are, not by a miracle, but by the work of your arms. Baker, be who you are. Everybody gave alms to the old man. But to Roland, they said, what is a young man like you out begging? Why don't you work for a living? Nobody will hire me, replied Roland Pye. That's what you say. There's a king with so many hungry soldiers that he'll pay good wages to anyone willing to feed them. So Roland Pied went to the king's kitchen and took the old man whose alms he'd been sharing. The oven had never been used by anyone. Roland mixed the dough, then he rolled it into rings. Then he boiled them, dressed them with their seeds, baked them until they're golden brown. Then he tossed them into a crate to cool down. Whenever Roland wearied of baking, he'd play his recorder. And once he was weary of playing his recorder, he'd sing. Baker, why do you bear those silent things? Baker, how did you forget to stand where your feet are? Baker, no woman loves you well, although it is cold and good for hell. Baker, you are too dirty for a lover to wish to cream. Your limbs are the knots and cords of an old-fashioned machine. Baker, line the rings and bash the boards. You don't need their applause for a thing that is yours. You are a baker and are what you are, not by a miracle, but by the work of your arms. Baker, be who you are. Hearing the singing, a princess looked out the window. She saw Roland Pye and fell in love with him. But she was a princess and he a baker. The king would never consent to their marriage. So they decided to run away together. They fled at night in a boat. When they're already on the high seas, Roland remembered the busker. He said to his beloved, we must fetch the old man, since he shared his own. We can't go off and leave him like that. At that very moment, the old man came up behind the boat, walking on the water as though it had been dry land. Reaching the boat, he said, we agreed to divide everything we had. I share everything I own. Now you have the king's daughter. You must give half of her to me. At this he gave Roland Pye the knife to cut his bride too. Roland Pye took the knife with a trembling hand. You are right, he said. You are perfectly right. He was on the point of cutting his bride in two, when suddenly the old man stopped him. Stop. I knew you were a just man. 
I am the dead man, mind you, whom you covered with stones. Go now, and may the two of you always be happy. At this, the old man walked away on the waves. The boat came to an island rich in all good things, the princely palace awaiting the newlyweds. My first thought was he lied in every word. That horny cripple with malicious eye asking to watch the working of his lie online. A mouth scarce able to afford suppression of the glee that person in store is dead to have one more mix of game thereby. What else should he be set for with the staff? What saved the whaling with his lies is there? All travelers who might find him posted there. And after the road, I guess what skull I flap would break when the question write my epitaph for fast on the dusty thoroughfare. If at his count I should turn aside into all this track which all agree hides the dark tower, yet acquiescing that in turn is appointed, neither pride nor hope rekindling at the end described, so much as gladness some end might be. For what with my whole world wide wondering, what with my search drawn out through years, my hope dwindled into a ghost I'll fit to cope with that obstreperous joy success would bring, hardly tried now to view the spring my heart made finding failure in its scope. As a sick man, very near to death, seems dead indeed, who feels beginning to end the tears, and takes the farewell of each friend, and hears one bid the other go, draw a breath freely outside, since all is over, he saith, the blow falling no grieving can amend. While some discuss if the other days be room enough for this, and when a day seems best for carrying the corpse away, with care about banners, scarves, and staves, and still the man hears all and only craves, he may not change some splendor, love, and stay. Thus I had for so long suffered in this quest, her failure prophesied so oft be drift, so many times among the band of wit, the knights who true dark power search and rest their steps, that just to fail as they seem best, an old doubt was now should I be fit. So quiet as despair I turned from him, that hateful cripple, out of his highway into the path he pointed, all the day it being a dreary one at best, dim was settling into its clothes, and shot one who river ran here to see the plain catch its spray. For Mark, no sooner was I fairly found, pledged to the point after a pace or two, than pausing through a backward a last view, over the safe road t'was gone, great plain all round, nothing but plain to the horizon's bound, I must go on, naught else remain to do. So on I went, I think I never saw such starved in normal nature, nothing throve, for flowers as well expect a cedar grow, but chortle and spurge according to their law, I'm making bagels. What chortle and spurge, according to their law, might propagate their kind with undue awe. You think a fur and be a treasure trove. No penry and dirt your single base in some spring sort were in the land's portion. See or close your eyes, said nature peevishly, and nothing skilled. I can't help my case. Tis last judgment fire must cure this place. Calcine its clods except my prisoners free. If there pushed any ragged thistle stalk above its mates and head was chalk, the vents were jealous else, who made holes and rents in the dog's harsh forest leaves, bruised as to walk, full hope of greenness, as a brute must walk, passion your life over the brute's intent. As for the grasses, who scarce his hair and leprosy, thin dry blades, pricked the blood, which underneath would beat it up with blood, 
one stiff blind horse, his every bone and stair, stood stupefied, however he came there, thrust no past service from the depth of stud. A lie, you might be dead for aught I know, with red gaunt and calum neck is rain, and shut eyes beneath the rusty mane. Seldom went such grotesqueness with such woe. I never saw a brute I hated so. You must have been quick to deserve such pain. I shut my eyes and turned them on my heart. As a man calls for wine before he fights, I asked one draft of earlier, happier sights. Here fitly I could hope to play the part. Think first, fight afterwards, soldier's art. One taste of old time sets all to rights. Knock it, I fancied Custard's reddening face beneath its garniture of curly gold. Dear fellow, till I almost felt him fold. An arm in mine to fix me to that place. That way he used, alas, one night's disgrace. How oh, had my heart been fire and left it cold? Giles, then, the soul of honor, there he stands. Frank is ten years ago and night at first. An honest man should dare, he said he durst. Good, but the scene shifts. Thaw with hangman's hand pinned to his breast the parchment. His old band reason, poor traitor, spit upon and cursed. Better this present than a past like that. Back, therefore, to my darkening path. No sound, no sight as far as the eye can strain. Will the night send a howl or a bat, I ask? When something on the dismal flat came to arrest my thoughts and change their train. A sudden little river crossed my path, as unexpected as a serpent came. No tides congenial to the glooms. This is a froth by it might have been a bath, the fiends going move. To see the wrath of the black eddies be spat with flakes and spoons. So petty and so spiteful, all along the little scrubby old is kneeled over it. Drenched willows pump the headlong and fit to rout despair. A suicidal throng, the river which had done them all the wrong. Whatever that was rolled by to turn no wit. Which while I afforded good saints, how I feared to set my foot upon a dead man's cheek. Each step of field was fear, I thrust the seat for all those tangled in his hair and beard. It may have, may, may have been a water rat I speared, but ugly it sounded like a baby shriek. Glad was I to reach other bank, now for a better country. Bank presage, who were the strugglers? What war did they wage? Whose savage trample could thus pad the dank soil to a plash? Toads in a poison tank, or wild cats in a red hot cage. The fight must so have seemed in that foul sir. What to pen them there with all the plain to choose? No footsteps leading to that horrid views. Now out of it, mad bruin set to break, break their mad bruin set to break their their yeah. The fight must so have seemed in that foul sir. What planned them there with all the plain to choose? No footsteps leading to that horrid views. Now now the mad bruin set to break no their brains look out like galley save the Turk fits for pastime and they're Christians against Jews. And more than that, a furlong on, why there, what bad use was that engine for? That wheel or brake, not wheel, that arrow fit to reel men's bodies out like silk. With all the air of Coffin's tool, on earth left unaware, or brought to sharpen its rusty teeth of steel. Then came some stub ground, once of wood, next to marsh and sea, now mere earth, as desperate and done was, so the fool finds worth, makes a thing and mars it, till his mood changes and off he goes, within a rude bog clay and marsh, sand and stark black dirt. Now blotches rankling color day and grim, now patches where the leanness of the soils broke into moss or substances like coils. Then came a palsy dose, a cleft to him, the distorted mouth that splits its rim, gaping at death and dies while it coils. As far as ever from the end, not in the distance but the evening not, to point my footsteps further at the thought, great black bird, Apollyon's bosom friend, sailed past and beat his wide wings dragon pen, then brushed my cap perchance to guide I saw it. For looking up aware I somehow grew, complained to give a place all round, the mountains with such names to grace mere heights and heaps now stolen of you. How thus they surprised me solving you, how to get from there was no clear case. Yet half I seemed to recognize some trick of mischief had happened to me, God knows what. In a bad dream, perhaps, here ended then progress this way, when in the very nick of giving up one more time, came a click as when the trap shuts your in the den. Burningly it came upon me all at once. This was the place. Those two hills crouched like two bulls off horn and horn and fight, while to the left a tall, scalloped mountain, dunce doddered and dozing at the very nuns, after a lifetime of training for the sight. What in the midst lay but the tower itself, a round squat turret, blind as a fool's heart, built of brown stone without a counterpart in the whole world. The tempest's mocking elf points to the ship and thus the unseen shelf, 
He strikes on only when timbers start. Not see, because of the night perhaps, why they came back for that. Behind it left the dying sunset, kindled through a cleft. The hills like some giants in the hunting lay, chin upon hand to see the game at bay. No stab and in the creature to the half. Not here, what noise was everywhere it told, increasing like a bell, memes in my ears, of lost adventurers, my peers. How such was strong, and such was bold, and such was fortunate, yet each of old, lost, lost, one moment now the woe of years. There they stood, ranged along the hillside, met, to view the last of me, a living frame, for one more picture in a sheet of flame. I saw them and knew them all, and yet, dauntless, the slumber to my lips I set and blew. Child roll into a dark tower came.
Once was a rich man who had just one son, and the boy was dearly loved by his father. As everybody knows, the great scourge on earth for a rich man is work. Therefore, when his son turned 14, the father decided to send him to school to learn the science of laziness. On the same street as the rich man, there lived a famous and highly respected professor who had never done a lick of work in his life he could get out of doing. The rich man called on him and found him stretched out in the garden under a fig tree with a cushion under his head, a cushion under his back, and a cushion under his buttocks. Before talking to him, I must first see how he does, said the rich man to himself, and he hid behind a hedge to observe the man. The professor, stayed, the professor lay as still as a corpse with his eyes closed. The only time he moved was whenever he heard the thud of a right fig falling on the ground near where he lay. He reached slowly out, bring it to his mouth, and swallow it. Then he went stir again until another fig fell. This is just the professor my son needs, he decided the rich man. And he came out from his hiding place. He introduced himself and asked the professor if he'd teach his son the science of laziness. Old man, answered the professor, just above a whisper. Don't talk so much. It tires me to listen to you. If you want to bring your son up as you and I are, just send him to me. So the rich man went home, took his son by the hand, and thrust a feathered pillow under his arm and led him to the garden. I urge you, he told him, to do everything you see this professor of idleness do. The boy, who already had an inclination for that particular science, also stretched out beneath the fig tree. Observing his teacher, he saw him reach for every fig that fell bring it to his mouth. Why should I work myself to death, reaching for figs, he thought. And he lay there with his mouth wide open. Soon a fig fell into his mouth, and he let it go down slowly. Then he reopened his mouth. Another fig fell. This time it missed. He lay there perfectly still and murmured, Why so wide of the mark? Fig fall into my mouth. Seeing how wise his pupil already was, the professor said, Go on now. You have nothing to learn from me. You can even teach me something. The boy went home. So the boy went home to his father, who thanked heaven for having given him such a smart son.
when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which connected them to another, and assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal stations to which the laws of nature and nature's law entitle them, at least in respect to the opinions of mankind that requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments instituted among men, deriving their just power from the consent of the government. And whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and institute new government laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers into such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed to light or transient causes. And experience accordingly has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer when evils are sufferable than right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they have become accustomed. But when long train of abuses and usurpations, all pursuing invariably the same object, evinces the design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and provide new guards for the future security. Such as being the patience suffered of these, such as being the patience of these colonies, and such as the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present king of Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. Proof, to prove this. Let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused to set to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public good.
broken charcoal. I'm sure somebody would love a charcoal bagel out there. Somebody would rave about it. I'll oh, come eat this charcoal bagel. It's not charcoal though. It's poppy seeds. Uh, I guess you're probably making a joke there, I guess. Interesting. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Thanks for sharing your knowledge about Icelandic seasons. Seasonality in Iceland. Oh, I dropped a bagel. White bagel down.
hard ass buzzer first, and then excuse from pain, and then those little anodynes, the dead and suffering, and then if it should go, and then if it should be go to sleep, and then if it should be the will of its inquisitor, liberty to die. Hard ass pleasure first, and then an excuse for pain, and then those little anodynes of death and suffering, and then to go to sleep, and then if it should be the will of its inquisitor, the liberty to die.
guess I'll check what exim Eximer tracks. Not sure what that is. Up your game. I don't know if I need to up my game. My game isn't very up. Zimmer tracks twenty five. Oh my God! I need some caffeine. Give me caffeine.
Yeah, West Coast, North Vancouver, British Columbia, Lonsdale and 17, to be exact. Across from a Starbucks, a city market, law, blahs, blah, 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 blahs. And, uh, and, uh, an SO. Let's leave those in there for a bit longer. Starbucks, yeah. I, I, I'm addicted to Starbucks, though. Starbucks. -y. Starbuckers. We're called Roseberry Rock Salt, which is our, we're named after our signature bagel, which is our namesake. I didn't come up with the name. It's not a bad name. It's not a particular good name either, but we're going with it. Too many syllables. Rosemary rock salt. It's like it's like a haiku. It's like no, it's not a haiku. If, if, if the name of your business is a haiku, a haiku, then you've you've used too many syllables in your name, and just enough for a haiku. So maybe you should stick to haiku writing instead of naming businesses. Read your comment in a moment here. I, I can't see it from the distance. This, I don't know, two feet away is like making the font readable wouldn't make any sense. I wish Twitch would re redesign their mobile app. Uh, um, yeah, I I used to drink the coffee here, but I uh, this might sound weird, but uh, I've stopped drinking hot coffee. I only drink it cold brew now, and. Uh, so I, I don't drink co the coffee here because it's, we only we only offer hot hot coffee, and uh, I don't drink hot coffee anymore. I'm a stop. I'm a a temperature snob. Can't handle the hot coffee anymore. So uh, yeah, uh, we do have we do brew coffee here, but I don't drink it because it's not cold. I only drink cold coffee. Ah, Kool Aid. What? Not that I know of. I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody in their right mind that would put Kool Aid in water. Kool Aid's fucking disgusting. Although I wonder, I wonder if Kool Aid has tried making a coffee Kool Aid. Why not? Why not? This is the question. I, I would I would drink coffee Kool-Aid. I think it probably tastes better than regular Kool-Aid. If it had caffeine in it, sign me up. Sign me up for that shit. Caffeinated Kool-Aid. Sounds good to me. I also I also live for for cold foam. 
if I could float on a cloud of cold, cold foam, like I would. Uh, to me, that would be heaven, floating on a cloud of cold foam. Don't give me hot foam, just give me that cold foam. I live for that in the morning. That first sip of cold foam, oh my god. Will that cold foam on my lips? I smear that cold foam all over the place. All over my mouth. Yeah, so I, I can't drink coffee unless it's cold and it has a frothy a frothy head of cold foam on top. So my two requirements. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would make sense that we should we should sell some cold brew here, but um unfortunately I'm just a baker here. I don't make decisions. I only make decisions about baking. Uh, we can't really compete with Starbucks anyway, so. We, we can only re compete with Starbucks by doing something they don't. Oh, actually, they didn't make bagels, so never mind. I don't know how we compete with Starbucks. No, we're not. I, I doubt we steal business from Starbucks. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll just set up. I'll set up a cold brew coffee uh, stand right in front of Starbucks. Come, come and get your cold brew right right here for I'll sell it for like I'll, I'll sell it for a, a, like a nickel or a quarter less than what they sell it for uh, not not the fraction like an actual quarter quarter like a coin. I think that, that'd probably be illegal though, setting up a, uh, a, uh, a cold brew stand right in front of the Starbucks. That'd be awesome though. That, that would be a fun corporate troll. I should shop locally. There, there's a JJ Bean across the street, but uh, I don't like their cold brew options. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, actually, I've tried doing that, and my camera gets too hot and it shuts off. I, I've tried putting the camera right here, and it, it gets the camera gets too hot and it it, it like shuts off. So. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure where to put it. I guess I could put it right here. I don't know. I'll, I'll try. I'll try that tomorrow. Um, today I'm gonna probably shut down the stream pretty soon because I can't go across the street and get some coffee. So yeah, um, I'll, I'll think about. I'll think about trying to figure that out tomorrow. I put it here and it gets too hot. And I put it here and it gets too hot. Um, but uh, I, I could probably put it up like sort of an angle down here. I don't know if you can really see much there though. I could maybe put it here or there. I don't know. I'll figure something out tomorrow though. Yeah, you can't really see much what's going on in the oven. That's where all the exciting stuff goes on. I guess. I don't know. But you can consider this exciting.
Whoopie Pie. Uh, no. I don't know how to make Whoopie Pie. Is that a trick question, though? Sounds like a great trick question to me. Or rhetorical, I don't know. Rhetorical. Oh, what am I doing now? Oh, uh, I'm having a malfunctioning oven this morning. That this back flame keeps on shutting off. I need to get a. I need, need to get an oven tech in here to look at it. So I do not know how to fix this oven. Probably just needs to be cleaned out in there. I guess. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. I will certainly try to enjoy the box. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get a muffin too. I like. I just need. To, I need some like carbs and like. I really. I need something thick in my stomach. Something ready. Fill it up. I guess I could eat a bagel, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat a bagel later. I think so. I'm gonna have a muffin. First, and then I'll have a, a bagel from my home break. Maybe a, a cinnamon with peanut butter and jam. Or uh, I've been at a Stevenson for a while. That's our lox cream cheese. I usually, I don't get it with cream cheese. I'm not a big fan of cream cheese, uh, so I usually get it with butter, butter and salmon. It's a good combo, actually. Butter and salmon. Okay, I'm trying to eat less fish, though. Um, hmm. Trying to be more vegetarian, so uh, you know I can do my part for saving, saving the environment. Annihilation. seconds or a minute.
It's going to shut down the stream after I put these in the oven. Uh, actually, I'll put my next batch in here. I can go order a coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. watching. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. An excellent morning. And uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.